Hello everybody and welcome back to Arjun's channel. My today's review is going to be on Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. So, like I said in my previous books, just repeating again, that my favorite types of books are thrilling books. So this book has literally, it has a war. At the end, it literally has a war inside camp. So at the start, it's like uh, at the first chapter, battling. I battle the cheerleading squad. He's actually at school. All the books literally of Percy Jackson is the fourth book. So the fifth also starts at school. So it says, I battle the cheerleading squad. So it's actually, um, there's like a event at school. And in the last book, he had a encounter with like um, a, a mortal that was literally like able to see through the mist. The mist is like a, a what do you call it? A pure substance of magic or whatever you can call it. It's just magic that hides mortals, uh, hides the monsters and stuff, the monster world from the mortals' eyes. So, like any mortals can't, like not all the mortals can see the monsters, swords and stuff. Suppose if two people are sword fighting, then the public would see that they're just fighting with guns or something or missing, shooting. And, or they would see like they're just wrestling, but they wouldn't see the sword. So the mist hides them, but there was this girl, Rachel, and that she was, uh, Percy encountered her while on a quest in the last book. So he found her in in this book at school, and he she, he was like, "Wait, what are what is she doing here?" And then uh, he meets her, and then she he talks with her and stuff, and then she he gets it why she's here. And then when, just when they start to see, see the show, the event show thingy, um, Rachel sees the monsters at school. And even Percy doesn't see it because Percy is also partly hidden. All half-bloods, most half-bloods are also hi hidden from the mist a little bit. So even Percy isn't able to see everything clearly, like the labyrinth. So this is the battle of the labyrinth. So in the war, it happens in the labyrinth. It's like an underground maze. And then uh, that happens later. So right now, um, all, of, all of the people at school are just watching the show. And then there's a few um, girls that are actually um, Dracane, or I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like um, winged uh, vampires. It's winged vampires, I think that's, how it is and they all there's like th two of them one is like a new dracane a young one and another is very very strong dracane so um they both are like they both go away from the show and hide somewhere and then uh the two dracane find them and then they just fight percy kills the first one but then um and then the other one the like strong one she just Percy was about to kill her, but she just vanished in, and burst in flames. So she just like ran away, escaped, because she knew that Percy would kill her. So in the war she comes, but I'm not going to tell you more about it. Or The war is like my favorite part. I don't really like, I didn't really like all the parts in here. But I really, I, I was literally reading this war part again because I really like it. So, um... After that, they go to camp, and then at the end of this book, I think it um she, Rachel she becomes the oracle. It's very complicated, so um so they go to camp. She uh, he takes Rachel with him, and they uh, they find Annabeth on their way as well. So Annabeth and um him and Rachel they all go to camp and that's pretty much where I'm gonna tell you the summary now over here like I do in my videos I'm just gonna compare mine and this so as the son of a Greek god uh, I've I've had my share of near this that disasters and now my arch enemy Luke 
wants to invade our camp via an ancient labyrinth. Yeah, so labyrinth is like, uh, it's an underground maze. Very, very big. It's like, um, it's probably, it's literally like spread across all of America. Like, literally just walking in the la labyrinth could get you all the way from Florida to New York. It's just very far. And, um, it's it's actually a very very dangerous one as well everywhere there's like traps and stuff spreaded and like um there's a few monsters roaming in it as well and there's this string called the ariadne string thingy it actually is like a compass in the labyrinth labyrinth so it could guide you wherever you want to go it and the labyrinth reads your mind so it fools you and like if you want to find some place then it'll it'll make you think that it's over there when it's actually over there so it just fools your mind but the only person which is not fooled by it are some powerful um mortals that are not fooled by the mist so the um the the person who built the what do you call it um the labyrinth is Actually, that Dallas, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's somewhere in here. Um, I can't find it right now. He's in the end of the war thing. Yeah, I'll just find it. Yeah, Day Dallas, however you pronounce this name. So that's that's the builder. And he actually made the, um, he actually made the, what do you, uh, the labyrinth, like, it just grows itself. It just keeps on growing. It's like another skin of the earth. So it just grows and grows and grows and grows. And um, then uh, when the enemies, I said, like, it's right, like here, now my arch enemy, Luke, wants to invade our camp by an ancient lab labyrinth. So he leads a huge army He's actually a half-blood friend of Percy, but then he uh, he helps Kronos, like, he helps Kronos rise, and um, all, he just leads a huge army of monsters through the labyrinth, because, like, that border I said in my second book, I think, that border, if you go under it, then it's not gonna help, it's not gonna, like, stop you from going through. So, uh, he just... Uh, he just leads the army through the labyrinth, I mean the labyrinth or whatever, uh, through the labyrinth and then just appears inside of camp. But everybody there knows that they're going to attack right under the Zeus's fist thingy. It's like a landmark in the camp because the camp is pretty big. So they, um, so he just like brings the army there and when they invade, it's like the whole camp is ready, which is why they don't like do that much damage. So there's like 80 campers and there, there's like cabins. So Ares is the god of war, which is why the Ares campers are like at the front line. Apollo is god of like archery and stuff. So he, they're at the back shooting the monsters and stuff. So no, they don't, they, the Luke loses the war because Luke is actually Kronos. Kronos takes the body of Luke. Kronos is like, um, okay, yeah, if I tell you everything, then you're not even going to read a single book because Kronos, if I tell you everything about Kronos, he's actually, well, he's a titan. And before, so first there were giants and titans. A giant named Ori Uranus or Oranos, I don't know how to pronounce his name either. So Oranus is like the god of or the giant or the titan, whatever, of the sky. And Gaia is the goddess or whatever of um the earth. So uh so she actually gives birth to the giants and he he um uh, he is like the father of the Titans. So Cronus is a Titan, and the other the giants will come in the next series, which is the um, what do you call it? The um, Heroes of Olympus. This is I also read those. I'm going to be doing reviews a few uh, like a few days later about them as well. So that's pretty much it for my review for this book and my next one is going to be on Percy Jackson and the last Olympian
be sure to watch that video. And please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.